Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining me for another Blender tidbit. This one is going to be about better renders with Eevee. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to light a scene in Eevee with an HDRI background, but not have to actually render that background so we don't see the photo booth, but we can use it in reflections and for scene lighting. Now, that left us with a well-lit scene of metallic letters, but it's kind of lackluster, literally. Uh, if you take a look at what Cycles looks like, it takes time, but you can see that we have these nice reflections in the lettering itself and some kind of hint of reflections on the floor here. Now, that is what we're going to try to restore in Eevee and, let, you know, at least fake it. We're going to have it done fast. We don't want to have to wait forever for a frame to render, like in Cycles. The first thing we're going to have to do, though, is change our viewport samples, which is by default at 16. It does not really give you a really good idea of what things are going to look like once you start adding reflections. So we're going to start by changing that to 64. You can make that higher if you want to, if you have a better video card. I do not have the greatest one in the world. It's a GTX 750 Ti, which is probably the minimum I would suggest uh, doing a EV viewport with. Um, if, it, if I had the ability, I would be doing this on at least a 1060, but the 750 Ti does pull it off. So, first thing we want to do after we change viewport samples is to start adding things to our scene. Everything that we add, all these options, are going to take a little more time to render an EV, but not nearly as long as cycles. So let's go ahead and turn on screen space reflections. And you're going to see we have the reflections. We have the reflection in the lettering. We have an idea of that and an impression on the floor of what looks like a very blurry reflection. Um, you're going to see these edges, though, and we want to take care of those. Uh, by default, in Blender 2.8, at least in the version that I am using, half-res trace is turned on. As soon as you turn that off, we can have a full-res trace, and it takes a little longer to render out, but you can automatically see everything is looking better. Uh, while we're here, we're going to turn refraction on, and we'll see why in a little bit. It doesn't make a lot of difference now, but it will later on. Um, I don't really do a whole lot with the settings in here. Uh, they're pretty good to start with. Uh, one thing you can use is the max roughness. If you want to trim the reflections back a little bit, it makes rougher materials reflect a little less than they would and i'm trying to get matched up with cycles and this is more like what it looked like there so we're going to stick with that uh, the other thing i like is edge fading you can change how much reflection you actually have now in the cycles one we didn't have this dark dark reflection it was more subtle so i'm going to trim it right to about there it looks like about 0.4 and switch back to cycles as a comparison let that render out it's a lot closer. Still not the same because it's not a ray tracing engine, but I think we're doing really, really well here. It looks far better than it did when we started. So the next thing is going to be the bloom effect, which is really nice. And you don't have to turn it on. And if you do just turn it on with a highlighting situation, you can see that it doesn't look great, but plenty of options there. You can turn the threshold up so how much of the area is going to have to be uh, lit with a bloom. You can use the knee to fix the transition from bloom to no bloom. And if you want to, you can even change the radius of how far out it uh, blooms outwards. Now, you don't want to mess with this too much as you end up with these weird points of, bl of bloom. And that's not what you want. You want to just give that effect of a well-lit or a brightly lit object in a dark area. And I think that looks pretty cool, too. Now, one last little thing I want to go over, because I have had some questions on this, is well, what about glass? My glass does not render right in Eevee. So I've got a stretched out cube here. And let's go ahead and make that glass. Go to materials. We'll add a material. It just starts with the principled. And just like anything else, you're going to turn the roughness down. And turn the transmission up. And you'll see it's not doing anything. That's because there's a setting down here. And under settings, for screen space refraction. Turn that on, 
and we can see our EV again through the glass. Now, if your glass is not working, it's because you didn't go to screen space reflections. When I turn on refraction, that's why I did that there. If I take a look, it stops working. So you have to have it turned down in the screen space reflections and also down here, the refraction, screen space refraction under the material settings. If it's not in both places, your glass is not going to render properly at all. So I think that is a good place for me to leave this tutorial here. We've got pretty much everything I think you need to get a decent render out of Eevee, and the rest of it is going to be up to your lighting and the scene itself. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do for my next tutorial, but I have a couple of ideas, so hopefully I'll see you there.